Hi everyone, thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. If you're new here, my name is Sandy and on this channel we talk about pursuing a career in interior design and I give you home decor tips. Today's video is on both sides of the scale, I suppose, because we are talking about how you can create an interior design concept board. This is my concept board that I presented to my friend recently. She is an influencer like myself and I'm gonna be doing her space. We're really excited, we're doing her entryway. If you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably already seen my Instagram reel about this where I went and I measured her space and I showed you the entryway and all of that. If you would like to follow this project, cause this is a real life project that's happening in real time. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram and see the progression of the project. I have a highlights here in my stories where I'm following the entire project. Now that we have that intro, let's get into the entryway. The four elements I like to include into my concept boards are before pictures, the inspo pictures that the client gave me, and then uh, a concept one and a section for concept two. So the reason I like the before pictures, um, the reason I wanna go into the before pictures here, I split up into four sections, is I want to be able to reference back to the things I wanna change. And I love how in Milano, this program, I can endlessly scroll. So I can just scroll right back. I can scroll sideways, which I really appreciate. As opposed to boards like this, it's usually just like in a PowerPoint and it's one sheet and I can't continuously scroll. I have to like go to another sheet and go to another sheet. I don't really like that. So here I like to include there before pictures. One, it's helpful for me as I'm creating the concept. I want to be able to see, oh, okay. Um, I want to change this light. I This is actually how much space I have in here. This is where the ceiling dips. Seeing these things is very helpful for me. And then when you're presenting and you tell your client, oh, I want to change this to that, you can reference what that is because they've seen their house. They know their house, but it helps to just speak your idea when you're doing that. Inspo. I want to have at least two to three images that the client shared with me that they like. And when clients share inspiration images with you, I would recommend asking be um, minimum three, max five, because you don't want to get too crazy. And always have them explain to you what they like about that image. Because when someone shows you an image, what you like about the image and what they like about the image can be totally different. There is an example where I was doing a bedroom for someone and she sent me these inspiration images and they all had these cool Persian rugs in them. So I recommended one and then she's like, mm, I actually don't like rugs like this. <laughs> and I was like, but all your inspiration images have them. And she didn't, she didn't even notice the rug in the photo. Uh, I was like, oh, okay. She just liked how the photo felt cozy and clean and complete. She didn't even notice that that style was in all of the pictures that she sent me. So when people explain to you what they like about an image, then you know what to pick up on from that image versus what you would pick up on in that image. Now that you have your inspo and you have your before pictures, I go into my concept um, and I name it. I like this one, I called it moody neutral and this other one is called bright neutral. So you can just name them whatever you want. I like to have something cutesy and if you can have some alliteration, it helps people remember them better. But I always, again, preamble people by saying, I'm not saying that we're gonna purchase these exact items, but I want you to see the mood of what we're going for. So I, in mood and neutral, I pull flooring, I pull um, lighting examples, maybe the mirror examples, um, wall texture examples to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking for your space. And then I will, you don't have to do this, but I will sometimes go the extra step of putting it in this. So this is a mood board. So in this one, I'm telling you, hey, this is the vibe. And this one I'm saying, hey, I'm actually thinking of these exact pieces. So you put it together like this, so that way it's not all just floating abstract and you can have them reference something that's a little bit more complete um, that gives them more visual. Because not everyone is a visual creative person. They, you're, I'm saying to somebody, hey, this would go on the floor and this is the floor that she has right now but she may not be able to like visually see how all of that would sit together. So when you do something like this, it helps them gauge, oh, this goes here, 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 here. So that, that just helps. You don't have to do this piece because this really is extra 
once someone picks a concept, you then do the mood board and you give them a shopping list. But this is helpful when you're able to scroll down and show this. So in this, for example, I went with the, I, I, I was able to click on things, make this bigger and say, hey, I really like this kind of texture that almost feels like a burlap texture on these walls. I think this would be really cool for your entryway. And then I put in a sample of something that I found on Etsy that I'm thinking of. And I ordered a sample of this. We may not go with this, but these are the vibes. So, oh, hey, I like this flooring. Um, I'm thinking of doing some a dramatic flooring with a black base. So I found a picture of a dramatic flooring with, with like a black wainscoting base so that she understands, hey, for your wainscoting here, I actually want to paint this black. And then I found a picture of wainscoting that looks most similar to hers painted black because this, this is a board and batten. So even though they're very similar, sometimes people really need to see as close to as possible as what their thing is. So this is an image that helps give her that vibe. And then I'm saying, oh, you know, we want, I want to do a funky chandelier. So I pulled an example and it didn't have to be like this, but if she's okay with this and I don't get this exact piece, now I know, oh, I can get something that's like bare bulbs, gold, black. I can get something that's like that. So these, you're just given the vibes, the concepts, the, you know, just, just how do you feel? <laughs> then I went into concept number two, and this was my bright neutral. She, these were inspiration images sent to me by the, um, by the client. And I had them in here because this one's like, this one's her bright one. And I, I was like, oh, you know what? This one's dark and these pictures are a little bit brighter than this. I should give her something that's a little bit brighter. Cause you do sometimes want to give a client, um, what, give them what they asked for, but also give them something they wouldn't have thought of. So I like to present concept one as the one that I really want to do. <laughs> and then I give them the safer one that I'm fairly certain that they'll agree to, but that I still think looks good. Don't just, don't just give them something that you think they want, but you don't like, because if you're not proud of the work, then you don't want to photograph it and you can't use it later for marketing for your business, but give them concept that you, the bold one that you want to do, and then give them the, the safer, but still fun one that you think that they would still really, really enjoy and still feels cohesive. So I pulled in two of her images to do that. And you'll notice that these aren't exact. So for example, she liked that this had black railing. I was like, you know what, let's take this step further. Don't just do black railing, do black wainscoting. And that is a, that will be a strong architectural detail in your home she really liked how airy these two were or this light up here and i was like okay well let's go airy here and then for here i really enjoy i made her a little board as well where this is the flooring and then we have a runner and use a cool light and i'm thinking two light lights here instead of here that was just like a one um floor lamp situation and you just try to make it look full and cute and attractive and you sit and just to give them the idea so this, for example, was a table I was thinking of, but just because um, these are all here doesn't mean they're all gonna be in this little mood board situation. Like this this bench would actually sit on another side um, in here. I don't have that. It would sit actually right here. I don't have that in here. And you don't necessarily need to, because again, these are just vibes. These are just, um, you know, how, how does this feel? Do you like this look? Do you like this color palette? This is all really what you're asking, but you do need to show some items to give them the idea. You know, she liked this light. We found something similar. Hey, do you like this one? We're actually not going to go with this one. This one was five grand. <laughs> so I found another one that was like more reasonably priced, but the, Hey, do you like a, a globe light with gold? So the fact that she was able to agree to that, I'm like, okay, cool. I know I can go in this direction. And then I gave her some of the paint colors I was thinking. And this, this photo was here because I want to do black doors and black trim with this design, which will give it a little bit more edge. Cause right now it's a little too safe for her. She's, she wants something that was a little different, which is the main reason I showed her this, but because it's the entry, she's concerned about it being dark. Um, so she was like, you know what, let's just do this and the edge of doing the flooring and adding some, adding some black. So we, we ended up leaning towards this one. However, what she ended up wanting was for me to combine the two concepts together. So then I came up with this. 
<laughs> so I made these in Canva. And this was the first one, this was the dark one, then this was the bright one, and then this one over here was the, where I combined the two of them together. So I pulled flooring from one, the lights from the other, this, and she really loved the texture and the burlap on the wall, but she was like, you know what, I, I'm just not sure that I want to go that dark on here, it's the entry. And I, and I totally understood what she was saying, so I found a way to incorporate them all together. So we actually ended up choosing this third one. If you want to know how to do these, you can head over to my YouTube video here about um, how to make a mood board in Canva. This is a really helpful video that will show you just how I put all that together and some tools that you can use. And now that I have shown her this, because when we went through this, I normally will give people like a week. I'll say, hey, here's your concept. Sit with it for a week and let me know what you like. Uh, I then, it's funny because I actually shared this on Instagram. I didn't think that she was going to pick this, but she saw me, she follows me on Instagram. She saw it and she was like, hey, I haven't seen this, these two together. I would like this. And I was like, oh, great, fantastic. And then I went in and I made myself a little to-do list. Now I'm going to back up a little bit. In this mood board, right, we have our before, our inspo, concept one, concept two, and we have... Um, and we have this one that I created. This will end up being the winner. This is what I share with the client. You can actually go in here and share and invite somebody. And then you guys can comment towards each other. So I keep, I once I hand this off to the client, I make a copy of it because this one is going to be my working document. This version is going to be where I like dump all my thoughts into and I keep my unsorted items. So when I pull in items, off of um, other websites, they sit in here. They're like rejects. I didn't go with these flooring options. Uh, I, and these are some of her other before pictures that I chose not to include in the in the concept board. I didn't go with these tables. or And then some of these are lights that I'm thinking about. So I like to keep them here tucked away so that I, I have them as an option. And then I went and I made myself a little to-do list, which you can just drag in from over here. And then I add tasks and I tell myself, okay, I need to do these things. And I can also comment to somebody. Okay, we're going to put this one in the trash. Then um, this one, I would add a little comment. Over here is a color comment. Little. And I would say, hey, you know, do did you order the samples? And someone could reply to me um, in my team that I'm working with if there is, you know, if I have an assistant that I'm working with or if I share this with, um, uh, let's say I'm getting, I'm working with a painter. Hey, this is the paint color we want. This is where we're thinking it's going to go. Whoever you're working with, if graphic designer, a render, an artist, whoever, you can have, you can give them access to this and you guys can talk back and forth. I recommend making a copy because you can talk back and forth with your client, with, with people that you need to in here. And then you can talk to your client in this version. You can talk to your client in this version of it where it's like clean and they're not seeing everything else. Because not only do I do comments in here, but there's a whole brain dump at the bottom. I put links to things that I need to, that I need to find. So going into the program that I use, we're now we're in Milanote. Milanote is a free tool that helps me like stay organized <laughs> and i really 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 like using this one. Oh, as far as the concept mood board process when i really start making my shopping list i actually like to use a different program and i can show you guys that program um even though you could do it in here too um if that's easiest for you but it's just a really cool tool that helps me keep all of my you know beginning stages organized and i prefer it over stuff like this because main main plus <laughs> is the continuous scrolling so i can just scroll here and scroll back like it's all one giant page and um and i can just like keep scrolling underneath as well so in this one in this one i can just Scroll on underneath and find all these and everything is just like easily movable. There's, it's not like I'm doing it in Word or PowerPoint where there's like some kind of rule or justification or line. I can't move it outside of this box. I can't do it out here. And I don't, I just don't enjoy that. This is like very free form. It reminds me of kind of doing it in Photoshop. Um, for those of us who aren't like Photoshop skilled, this is a great option. I really, um, 
if you see me looking off to the side, I wrote some notes down about what I like about this program. So not only this, but it populates color palettes. So for example, I can go in here and I can click these little three dots and I can pull a color. So it's pulling, it's pulling based off everything that's in this mood board. And then I can go and pull another color. And it's going to give me all colors that kind of go together. Maybe you're just thinking and you're not sure. I really love this. It's just su suggesting tons of colors to you that all kind of go together. And I really, that that's a really um, convenient, especially when you're like trying to pick pink colors and it's giving you all these like hex codes. So this is really cool. You can also sketch in it, which I haven't done and I haven't necessarily used the video format, but this could, that could be cool, especially for when I plan my YouTube videos. I also really like the to-do list feature. I'm going to delete these because they're not part of the board. But the to-do list feature, as I've shown you, I really enjoy this. So like, this is the entryway to do. And maybe I, once I've, I've done these, I've ordered samples for things and paint swatches. Then I need to make my list of all the items I need to get and I can check it off. I can, I love how every item, when you click on it, if you pull at the corner, there's a, there is a, an arrow. So I can actually put hey, this is the mirror I want to get. This, though this is an image, I can link to the mirror. I can add something here and just create link. And I can add a link to this mirror so that, I, so that I know where to get everything and I can keep it all in here. And then in terms of like creating links, you don't just have to find a link online. You can also clip a link from another website in here. There's a web browser. This is my little web browser here. And I would go onto um a website so this is a light that i actually am thinking about for this space and it's much more reasonable in price than the five thousand dollar one from circle lighting so i can go clip and it'll clip this and you can decide which board you want it to go to so i'm gonna have it go to the entryway and save it and then we're gonna go here i have two versions of this yeah there we go we're gonna go here and then this is this is the light. So this is the one I actually want to purchase. And this was the inspiration light, but this light was too much. So now I can keep, I can either keep it in here because I may not be ready yet, or I can, you know, just pull it out like I did. I also just, you know, keep all the things in here that I, that I need in the rejects. Like I said before, you can go through the process of deleting all your rejects now and just keep this as like maybe like the list, the shopping list, if you want to do that. I, I just leave everything in here because it could be useful for another project. The last feature I really enjoy about this is I can export it as a PDF. So you can export it as a linear document. I actually don't do that. I like it as a one big board. So I will export as a high quality, large PDF. And then I would send the PDF to the client. Even if you share this with them, not everyone's like super tech savvy like this. They may just not care about going into the program. One thing you can do to speed up the process is you can have um, a template. You can go in here and you can create templates. So if I zoom out, you'll be able to see this is the same thing I was just showing you, but it's blank. It's empty, nothing in it. And when I save it as a template, I can go in and then just recreate this every time. So I don't have to create the same format. And the way you actually create this, it was super easy. I realized I talked about how I did all the insides, but now how I set up the actual structure. So I just went in, I found a note and I just made a note and I stretched it. And then I put, you know, before pictures, picked the title I like, and then I just put it in here and then you can change the color of your card to whatever you want it to be in. So I replicated that and just like that. And then um, I'm trying to drag it to the trash. And then you'll also notice if I zoom out, this concept two is bigger than concept um, than concept one. And the reason is because I just felt like I needed more things to completely convey the concept a little bit more. So you can change these though. Like I can drag this and make it a smaller size and then I take uh, this arrow or this line and if I zoom out now they're more symmetrical so don't feel obligated to have it exactly the way I did I, I like that I can adjust this to what I need it to be which as opposed to the other ones that I showed you before so this is just all I did I found all the the lines I just did a line drag me 
and then you know I just pointed it down and you can also change the weight of it you can add a label to it if you want to you can make it double so that the arrow goes that way you can change the color of it if you needed to make it dotted if dotted means something different so however you need to customize your concept board this allows you to do that and that concludes today's video thank you so much for watching i hope that that was informative if you have any more questions about milanote and how i use it and other things um let me know because next week's video is going to be about different softwares that designers use for floor planning, rendering, all that project planning kind of stuff. So Milano is just one of the programs that I am familiar with and that I use. There's a slew of others and I will share those with you next week. So make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell going on so that you don't miss it. Remember, Beyonce said, if you like it, put a ring on it. And I say, if you like it, subscribe. Okay, if you like it, then you should have subscribed to it. <laughs> oh my God, you can't take me anywhere. Um, I just need that ring. And by ring, I mean that subscription. Hit down below so that we can be together in matrimony forever and ever. What are you, like, don't be out here playing the field with these other channels. What are you doing? What are you doing? Bye.